welcome to ATC, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about acute glomerulonephritis. The inflammation of glomerulus that occurs acutely, that is acute glomerulonephritis. We know that uh, there are some other condition where there is chronic glomerulonephritis. That means chronically there is an inflammation going on in the kidneys. Here it is an acute problem. Patient can develop with high BP, hematuria, all these things. This can mainly occur in the children. But even then, the many other uh, conditions, many conditions under this category can occur even in adult. Now, it's a disorder or a group of symptoms that occurs with uh, some disorders, some uh, diseases that cause swelling and inflammation of the glomeruli. That is a basic unit of a kidney. This is called as glomerulonephritis. Acute glomerulonephritis means acute inflammation leading to hematuria, proteinuria, and uh, renal failure that in, that in, that includes uh, elevated urea and azotemia. In that, hematuria is very very important. The main difference between nephritis and nephrotic syndrome is nephritis. It is predominantly hematuria, nephrotic syndrome, it is predominantly proteinuria. So in a normal kidney, you can see here inflammation occurs, that's why we call it as uh, glomerulonephritis. Normally the urine will be yellow in color, here it is red in color. So that is a major difference. Any patient who is having red urine, high BP, some pulmonary edema, then you have to always think about hematuria. Hematuria, there are a lot of causes including stones, structures, malignancy, prostatitis. So many reasons can produce hematuria. But uh, one of the reasons for hematuria is glomerulonephritis. That is an inflammation of glomeruli. Now, there are a lot of causes which can produce uh, glomerulonephritis. In children, one of the important conditions which produces glomerulonephritis is post streptococcal so streptococcal infection anywhere in the body produces antibodies against the kidney and it produces damage in the kidneys that produces glomerulonephritis and types of strep streptococcus that are nephro nephrotogenic nephritogenic strains there are different strains you can see in this chart they produces pharyngitis or skin infection from there antibodies will be formed these antibodies can act against kidney and destroy the kidneys subacute bacterial enterocarditis malaria fungal infection leishmaniasis hepatitis b c hiv all these things are common infection and that post streptococcal infection is very common in our country systemic diseases like sle good pasture syndrome henoch-schonlein purpura antiphospholipid antibody syndrome anca related small vessel vasculitis IgA nephropathy, focal segmental glomerulonephritis, these are the types of uh, focal segmental membranous, crescentic, musangio capillary, diffuse proliferative, all these things are types according to the uh, laboratory criteria. That means under the microscope you can get uh, different types of diseases. They all are due to primary renal disease. Other things are secondary to infection, secondary to an inflammation. But ultimately, all these things may lead to this type of uh, picture. Now, IgA nephropathy is one important cause for uh, an nephritic syndrome. Uh, that very common disease with severe uh, hematuria and uh, renal failure. Uh, patient can have hypertension also. They lead to focal segmental glomerular nephritis. It is an acute disease. Again, type 1, type 2 are there. Uh, we are not going to the details of that. Post infection, we already seen that it is due to immune response to streptococcal infection. There is a diffuse proliferation of endothelial and mesangial cells, infiltration of uh, neutrophils and macrophages, maybe crescent formation. So it is sometimes called as crescentic glomerulonephritis. Also common in developing countries and in our country, it is very very common. And the GBM antibodies or good pastures disease can also produce. Uh, a type of hypersensitivity re reaction that is uh, glomerulonephritis. It can be associated with lung hemorrhages. Uh, so that is very very important. Patient can have hematuria, 
lung hemorrhages, pulmonary infiltrates. So, this is good pasture syndrome. Lupus is classically seen in SLE. SLE patients can have lupus nephritis. RPGN or crescentic glomerular nephritis that produces it's a variant of acute nephritic syndrome. Here patients initially present with acute glomerular nephritis associated with rapid onset of severe acute renal failure. That is very important. It's a very rapid renal failure. Okay. So that patient can have high BP, hematuria, pulmonary edema, all these things. So on uh, histological examination, you can see lot of glomerular crescents in the uh, finding. So more than 50% crescents you can see here. So they are classified pathologically into three major categories, anti-GBM antibody disease, immune complex disease and palsy immune disease. So immune complex disease is um, uh, like antibody with uh, some other uh, like complement uh, associated uh, disease. Anti-GBM means anti-GBM attacks the glomeruli. Positive immune means hypersensitivity reaction chances are less. So immune, cha immune reaction chances are less. Here you have different type of uh, positive immune disorders. You have different type of glomerular nephritis. One is vaginized granulomatosis, microscopic polyangitis, renal limited electrotizing crescentic glomerular nephritis, eosinophilic granulomatous polyangitis, or Chuck Straw syndrome. So most of these patients can have ANCA uh, ANCA that is an antibody positivity. So these patients can have an association with the ANCA so that is positive. Immune complex disorder means immune uh, antibodies with uh, complements form a complex and attack the kidney. Here post infectious collagen vascular disease like lupus nephritis anapsonalin purpura, immunoglobulin A nephropathy, mixed cryoglobulinemia, primary renal, renal diseases, membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis, fibrillary glomerular nephritis, idiopathy. If you see all these causes, there is a overlap between various kinds and some, some areas it is not, not strictly demarcated. They have, some uh, renal diseases have, can have mixed pattern. Anti-GBM in that classically good pasture syndrome. Here the lung and kidneys are involved, good pasture syndrome, anti-glomerular basement membrane antibodies are present and they attack uh, membrane, basement membrane in the lungs and kidneys. They can produce bleeding in the lungs and kidneys. They are mostly associated with HLA DR15 and DR4. So, Rarely anti-GBM disease uh, can occur only kidney involvement, but with good pastures means both kidney and lungs are involved. So most of these patients, uh, around 10 to 40 patients can also have ANCA positivity. Now post-streptococcal antibody, uh, sorry, post-streptococcal glomerular nephritis is mainly seen in children, especially in our country or third world countries. We can get most of these patients can have skin and uh, uh, skin and uh, pharyngitis from there the bacteria produces antibody response these antibodies uh, can uh, damage the kidney and they can produce nephritic syndrome mostly it is due to beta hemolytic streptococci mainly uh, different types type 12 type 49 and it forms uh, forms immune complexes and uh, destroy the kidneys so they produce complement activation and inflammation in the kidneys. Now you can see here, this is an anti uh, antibody mimicry, something like a patient can have antibodies against the bacteria. These bacteria, these antibodies ultimately form uh, complement activation by, uh, uh, by attaching to the uh, complement and uh, that produces uh, neutrophil activation and tissue damage. Patient can have hematuria, uh, urine is smoky in color or cholera colored. Hypertension is seen in many patients like 50 to 90 percent of the patients, headache, uh, anorexia, nausea, vomiting. Many patients can have hypertensive encephalopathy, altered behavior, flapping tremor, uh, raised ICP, uh, optic fundus. If you examine, there will be papillary edema. Patient can have acute pulmonary edema also because of the volume overload. Flank pains are seen in many patients and uh, kidney uh, involvement can lead to oliguria. 
the main feature of any glomerular nephritis it can be the first clinical feature will be hypertension many patients who have uh, uh, like uh, glomerular nephritis can have acute hypertension and hypertensive crisis and many patients can have hematuria so hematuria you can see the when we examine the urine we can see urinary rbc cast patient also can have edema oliguria proteinuria red blood cell cast in the urine and some of the patients can go to renal failure especially who have rpgn or presentic glomerular nephritis and there are some some of these patients can even go to chronic kidney diseases so they can even progress to chronic kidney diseases now other symptoms like uh, patient can have fever chills rigors night sweats uh, retinitis uveitis epistaxis sinusitis oral ulcers cardiovascular murmurs uh, pericarditis heart failure hemoptysis uh, chest x-ray may show bilateral infiltrates nodules uh, diarrhea colitis enterocolitis pancreatitis seizures peripheral neuropathy digital ischemia infarction purpura or the skin uh, arthritis arthralgia myalgia Uh, so many things can be there and sometimes patient can have features of infection like streptococcal or staphylococcal infection like sore throat skin infection jaundice uh, and other findings can be there due to infection the complication is mainly uh, patient many patients can have high bp and hypertension related emergencies like patient can have encephalopathy patient can have pulmonary edema patient can have tachycardia cardiac failure uh, all these things are very common many patients can have hemolysis lead to anemia infection related complication and some of these patients may progress to chronic kidney disease and renal failure post uh, glomerular nephritis uh, post infectious glomerular nephritis we have to investigate the case so like any other case we always uh, do the urine test urine routine investigation urine rbc cast so that is very important rbc cast is very important then complement uh, since uh, most of this complement they are mediated complement uh, uh, levels can be low because acutely complements are utilized and their levels are low so c3 may be low in most of these patients and the streptococcal antibodies are very very important aso titer can be checked around 30% of the patient it will be elevated and the hyaluronidase and the streptokinase and the deoxyribonucleic uh, nucleus b all these things can be elevated throat and skin culture can be done in patients who is having uh, skin lesion or throat infection renal biopsy may be recommended in some of these patients with diffuse proliferative glomerular nephritis or not if they are not responding to your routine treatment we may have to go for renal biopsy so there are differentiating features between each type of uh, diseases we will not go to that type of differentiating features now because the main feature we should learn in uh, glomerular nephritis is patient can have uh, severe hematuria hypertension hypertensive encephalopathy pulmonary edema these are the common findings but once you uh, uh, examine the patient if there is no pharyngitis endocarditis uh, skin uh, skin lesions or uh, Uh, abscess uh, 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 abscess in the body then only you have to go for additional test like renal biopsy but the features are different in each type of uh, glomerular nephritis you can see the pictures here so renal biopsy is recommended no, no, not in all patients if you are suspecting uh, immune mediated destruction of the kidney then only you have to do the renal biopsy but many patients uh, before renal biopsy itself patient improves if it is a infectious glomerular nephritis but if it is due to an uh, immune mediated uh, destruction of the glomerular inside the kidney or the cause may be like sle or good pasteur syndrome peripheral antibodies we can check only if needed we have to go for kidney biopsy especially when there is a renal uh, cause for glomerular nephritis so histopathology can be done in patients who is having uh, suspected uh, immune mediated glomerular nephritis so you can see glomerulus appears hypercellular and capillaries are narrowed or occluded so that's a finding in uh, glomerular nephritis management uh, 
remember all patients who is having hypertension with hematuria needs complete bed rest because you need to give some time to uh, recovery salt restriction is very important because they can have fluid overload and pulmonary edema diuretics are very very important anti hypertensives like uh, ac inhibitors or irbs are very useful uh, but uh, we have to see the creatinine levels before starting this if patient is already having high uh, creatinine then better to go for calcium channel blockers dialysis is recommended in patients with uh, severe renal failure or hyperkalemia which is not responding to routine treatment like calcium gluconate ex insulin dextrose infusion salbutamol nebulization sodium bicarbonate and diuretics corticosteroids uh, if recovery is slow if the recovery is not uh, not uh, fast we have to give uh, high dose of methylprednisolone you can give 1 gram methylprednisolone into 3 days then uh, 1 to 2 mg prednisolone uh, can, per kg 1 to 2 mg per kg body weight can be started and taper over many days so if uh, streptococcal induced renal damage then go for crystalline penicillin that is the best option or you can give for, go for amoxicillin augmentin erythromycin nasithromycin all these things now different types of we have already seen immune complex uh, complex glomerulonephritis like lupus nephritis then you have to go for the lab investigations uh, like this according to this chart you can go for lab investigation here this is anka associated vasculitis we have to always check the anka positivity or negativity in patients who is having acute glomerular nephritis if they don't have any uh, obvious uh, uh, clinical finding of sle or a good pasture syndrome or anything like that or if the patient is not having any lung infection we have to ask for a anka uh, test now, immune complex glomerular nephritis uh, like hepatitis serology is very important anti gbm you can go for anti gbm antibodies plus or minus anka antibody testing again c3 glomerular uh, you have to check uh, c3 c4 uh, most of the time c3 c4 may be normal monoclonal immunoglobulinemia associated with uh, many multiple myeloma like uh, conditions there also you have to uh, check for all this uh, uh, immunofluorescence test kappa lambda light chain uh, restrictions you have to check so we have discussed about one of the important clinical condition that is acute glomerulonephritis in our country it is mostly post streptococcal infection glomerulonephritis in children and in adult it can be anka positivity or anka negativity many patients who is having sle also can develop glomerulonephritis isolated glomerulonephritis due to a problem inside the kidney or complemented mediated uh, problem uh, which can produce uh, renal failure or it can be due to hepatitis b or hiv or hepatitis c like that various virus infections also can produce glomerulonephritis whatever it is the most important finding in patients with will be hematuria any patient who is having hematuria without any major structural deformity we have to investigate for glomerulonephritis if there is a skin infection or pharyngitis treat with penicillin or amoxicillin if there is no infection features then we have to investigate we may require uh, tissue biopsy from the kidney and the treatment will be mostly antibiotic for post infectious glomerulonephritis and uh, it can be uh, steroid or steroid sparing agents like mycophenolate mofetil or azathioprine in uh, infect inflammatory mediated or immune mediated glomerulonephritis thank you